Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Shake Sales. My name is Sujan Patel. I've got Alan here. Alan is an expert at and been an SDR helping founders and and really book helping people book meetings. Alan, welcome. Tell us about Thank yourself you. before we jump in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sujan, for for having me here. It's my pleasure and a total honor to to talk a little bit about sales and business with you. Heck yeah. So, you know, before we before we, we hit record, we we're talking about you know, it's 2024, well past the COVID bust. People are struggling with sales. And, and so what are, you know, so let, let's dive into like, what are the most common today uh, sales struggles or struggles that sales reps are having? All right. That's a good question. And I, it's something that I, that I try to work on every day when, when I'm working with different companies and sales teams. And to be completely straightforward, so John, there are two main things that I always found. And is that the first thing is that we are all, we are trained as like we've been trained in the twenties, tens or in the, in the twenties, let's say in the, um, in the last decade. And mm-hmm. that is not working anymore in 2024 when we are talking about sales or outbound wise. Mm-hmm. Right. So everything needs to change in terms of how we adapt our message and our skills as a seller mm-hmm. towards this crowded space. And the second problem or the second challenge, I would say, it's not a problem, it's a challenge that it's nice to have it, but that forced us as a seller to become better is that right now, if you are in the SaaS space, every industry is crowded, right? Every day there are new and new and more tools that are competitors of yours. So if your message is, hey, this is what I do, A, B, C, D, F, G, uh, let me know if you want to buy you sound like any other 100 sellers that are sending the same emails or doing the same cold calling, right? So you need to be, uh, updating your speech and your messaging and tailor that in order to to stand out, right? Absolutely, yeah. That's a good point. So, I mean, two two big things you mentioned, like what's working in the twenty twenties, like early twenty twenties, late twenty twenty tens, doesn't really cut it anymore, right? And yeah. and I think my two cents is a big difference is in that time frame, everyone was buying any the like bottom 50% of sellers at a company could close deals and have a decent close rate. Today, those bottom 50% would be fired. That's that's the difference the the economy shift has 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 happened. And then the second thing is like the crowded space. You add so but the the challenge the third challenge in my opinion here is when you combine one with two, three is really bad, right? Like Less buyers or people are a little bit more budget conscious, not as like heavy as a buying cycle. Mm-hmm. More competition means less people for everybody, right? And the competition yeah. from from my experience, like Mailshake sales engagement tool, when we started back in 2015, one of like nine or ten, okay? Like double digits. Even when we yeah. started, we're like, ooh, I don't know about this space. It's pretty crowded. Yeah. Uh 2020, one of 110, 2024, one of 562. And I'm not just pulling these numbers out of my ass. Like these are numbers. If you go to G2 and look at G2, it's nuts. And like even the last four years, it's 5X in competition because one, technology is easier than ever. Doesn't mean Mm -hmm. those 560 whatever are real big competitors or whatever, but like they're going and doing, you know, they're going paying your, comp, your comp, you know, they're going after the same people. Um, and so now it's even harder to tell like who's real and what, you know, how do you know us versus whatever competition if we both say the same thing? Yeah, absolutely. And, and I couldn't agree more. At the end of the day, the gap that we had in 2020 or, or five, six years ago, uh, it was this big. And right now the gap is way bigger, as you were saying, if we connect point number one and point number two, basically we have the same companies or the same amount of companies trying to buy less tech or less technology or buying just uh, the needed tech. Uh, And on the other side, we have the sellers with the same poor sales skills that we had, but at that time something uh, performed, right? Like five or six years ago. So either we adapt our sales skills or we die, right? I mean, there's the yeah. only way that we that we that we have in this game. Yeah. So so let's, let's dig into that. So how how do you how do you today sell given that people don't want to buy or they want to buy less or they want you know more for less or whatever? Yeah, that's that's a great point. And and I identify another two or three things here. 
uh, when I'm working with sellers and so on is that there is no uh, highly targeted niche messaging, if we want to call it that way. Um, mm -hmm. We are saying the same to every seller, every buyer persona, every decision maker. It doesn't matter if you are a CFO, uh, HR manager, or a sales director, I'm going to pitch you exactly the same, right? Uh, and that's where the biggest problem is. You, as a seller, don't understand who you are targeting and what are the real pains or symptoms of those pains that you have that I can connect with my message as an emotional thing. And then mm -hmm. uh, measure that because basically I always say that emotion sell, but the ROI justifies the sell, right? So, mm -hmm. so I need to connect with you, understand what are your KPIs, what are you measured for, understand what are your fears, basically the ICP and buyer persona avatar that we always talk about, right? And from there, how can I tailor my message? Focus on you, not about what I can do, right? So you understand that I can do something for you and connect that to the second point that, that I'm always uh, finding when working with sellers is that uh, we, because I include myself sometimes, for sure, we are not perfect. We are not always um, measuring or making the sell quantifiable. What I'm saying here is that I'm just saying that we can help you save time and money, right? Most of the time. But every SaaS tool out there is helping you save time and money. So if you are just saying me that and I'm a CFO, I'm not buying that. Maybe mm -hmm. I bought that in, in, in 10 years ago, but I'm not buying that you help me save time and money. That's what any other seller is telling me in the other 15 calls that I receive every day, right? So yeah. targeting or tailoring the message plus quantifying the cost of action, cost of opportunity, cost of inaction, whatever the solution that you are trying to um, sell, it's key nowadays and still most of the reps has this legacy of selling the way that we sold like 10 years ago. Yeah, that makes sense. And and, and so here, here's, I want to dig into this like time and money factor because this is a 2010 message that's gone on for too long. In 2010, SaaS was new-ish. Um, it was in, it was in the early, you know, in the adopter stage, it was the early adopter side, right? So when you went to a CFO and said, I'll save you time and money, they're like, hell yeah, we're doing nothing. We're like doing it on pen and paper in Excel, right? Today, so you, the, the delta between them doing nothing to technology use is like a hundred X benefit. Okay. Now today in 2024, 14 years later, you're going to a, that same CFO with a better product than what they're using and saying, I'm going to save you time and money. And, and it's only a 2x benefit. And the SCFO is like, no, I'm good. 2x not worth my time. Right. Exactly. So, like, exactly. even though they might be bought into the message, the delta of value is shrunk because you're selling to people who have already adopted something. So, mm -hmm. from something to something else, that's the real thing that makes, uh, that's, that's what's sandbagging your, your, your value. Yeah. Man, I'm still in this explanation. This is the best explanation that I that I heard <laughs> over the last couple of months, to be honest. And I completely agree with you. I mean, it's that's why we need to do something in terms of skills, in terms of understanding how the buyer uh, journey or the buyer persona that we are targeting things and ads, right? And how we can measure that because it's not about we are better than than what you're using, and we can measure that or we can impact your KPIs in this way, but mm -hmm. is something for you a priority or timing wise something that you would do right now if i'm just increasing xyz your revenue or saving xyz time because you're doing great yeah. based on your criteria and your parameters right so this is key and what you said it's it's perfect so what do you do like how do you say like so you go to the same cfo what do you say versus instead of time and money Ah, that's a, that's a good one. It's like a real time practice or real life practice. I always try to validate pains before before not even thinking of pitching something, right? Like yeah. if I don't understand something that you are going through or based on my assumption or hypothesis of what you're going through, I am not able to validate that uh, or at least understand that I'm on the right path. I'm not even thinking of saying no because I'm calling you because we are doing whatever we are doing, right? So I need to understand that my hypothesis in the tech space of um, selling, for example, a solution like Mailshake or a solution like uh, Revolut or a solution like in any industry, right? Uh, it doesn't matter uh, what we are selling. If I don't see some signals that you are struggling with something that I can help, then I'm not pitching at all. So the first point when you're doing a cold call or a cold email, it's 
for sure using triggers, buying signals, buying intent. You have a lot of different tools right now that can yeah. help you with that. But taking that into consideration, being straightforward to, hey, if you have this, then there's something that I might be able to do to help you. I love it. Yeah, and I think this, it, it's, and the real answer is there is no, like, you can't go to the CFO one, every prospect's going to be different, right? But I think validating the pain, validating there is a pain point will also help you identify the pain points. And if you're like me, you're going to probably do a hundred cold calls to figure out or like ads or whatever to figure out the pain points and then figure out, okay, pain point one, solution one, right? Like just keep like how that combat of someone's like, it is time and money. Well, let me tell you about the time and money pitch, right? Um, but you, you don't know. And I think that's, that's, that's the difference, right? Struggle before the struggle today is everyone's solution seems like the same, but reality is everyone's pain point might be different and you can tailor your solution to that pain point. Mm -hmm. And that goes back to selling back, you know, selling one one yeah. right? Like who cares what you're a real good, a, a good or great seller they're going to sell whatever the hell they need to sell. It doesn't matter if it's, you know, like toilet paper, right? There's every single brand <laughs> looks the same. You need to wipe your butt no matter what. Uh, but if you tell me, you know, this is stupid, like, but yeah. uh, like the toilet paper hurts my butt. Okay. Well, you know, our toilet paper is made from bamboo leaves and magic <laughs> and it will help you heal or whatever. Right. So it's like, uh, it doesn't matter what it is, uh, even though there's a thousand options. Um, Absolutely. What, I love it. So um, another thing I want to talk about is, you know, so this pain point, we're talking about this from uh, getting on the phone, you get a response, you actually hear this. But most of the time when you send a cold email or an outbound sales pitch, a cold call, you don't mm -hmm. hear anything, right? Like you just, yeah. I'm not interested. No response. How do you start? To, you know, given the, the challenges today, how would you start an you know, outbound sales campaign? That's I know a, I'm putting you on the spot. Yeah, no, 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 that's amazing. And and it's one of the most bigger questions that I always receive or, or, or broader questions that I always receive when I work with different companies. In fact, uh, as a real example, yesterday I was working, yesterday and the day before, I had different workshops with a fintech company here in Spain. Uh, they are in four countries here in, in Europe and and they are facing something that it's, uh, their solution is so good that they can fit everyone, right? So the mm -hmm. first uh, taboo or, or something that they need to change as a mindset is that you cannot sell to everyone because if you're going after everyone, you're selling to no one, right? Uh, mm -hmm. At the end of the day. So the first answer to the question of how should I start my album campaign is changing the mindset from I'm always trying to qualify uh, my prospects to unqualify or disqualify my prospects. So mm -hmm. when you shift that mindset, and, and let me know if you are following my idea for sure. Yeah. Um, if you shift to that mindset of I'm always thinking of disqualifying, you will be able to ask the hard questions, the provoking questions, and the questions that you need to ask in order to receive. If you uh, ask those questions, the no that you are expecting, right? Um, so basically, this is the first shift that I'm doing with with uh, the the sales team that I'm working on, and the and the results are great because basically mainly for the SDRs or even in the the AEs that are running discovery calls or demo calls, a little later on on the sales cycle, they are always afraid of asking questions in order to receive a no because a no means you are not buying, but if you are not asking the questions, that doesn't mean that the client will buy or the prospect will buy either way, right? So you need to yeah. disqualify fast in order to move forward. So this is the first thing that I always have in my mind. And based on that, we build based on our assumptions, the uh, symptoms or pains that we think that they have, some structure that will be um, sparking some conversations or curiosity around the prospect um, to say no, say yes, whatever, but finding or looking to have uh, an answer as soon as possible, right? That's what we want. Love it. Makes sense. I think that's like, it's not easy. And it's not like it's not do this, do this one thing. But I think that's kind of the nature of when you're struggling uh, and you want to truly build something unique or different or something that would work is you got to put in the work to figure it out. And honestly, it could be two, you know, it could be Mailshake and Mailshake's competitor. And we do this exercise and we'll come up with something different, even though we might have the same 
target demographic. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And and you said something uh, before, Sujan, that that I agree a lot. That is that depending on the, I mean, the the, the client or the prospect in this case may be the same in a, in the theory in the paper that we have as an ICP or by a persona, but their problems, their challenges, their daily operational things could be different, right? Despite that, what I see that most sellers are struggling with connecting this uh, to the first question that is what are the, the problems that we fa- that we face as a seller right now is that uh, right now every solution out there going back to the example of the fintech company that I'm working with is that it looks like 80% or 90% of the solutions the different companies or competitors that you have out there are the same right they solve the same uh, problem that uh, you are solving right with different mm-hmm. UX, UI, different features, etc. But at the end of the, the day, the solution is the same. So how do you, uh, how do you detach from that and, and differentiate yourself? Well, with sales, uh, new techniques, new adaptions into that, and that's why sales at the end of the day, as you were saying regarding the toilet paper, um, psychology will always be there, right? We are human, so mm-hmm. if you if we use some human psychology, will be better. We will be better than than the other. 90% of sellers for sure. Love it. Yeah. Alan, thank you so much for joining. Uh, where can people go to continue on kind of getting more advice from you and, and following along? I, just so everyone knows, Alan has uh, an awesome uh, newsletter as well as just like dropping knowledge bombs on LinkedIn. Thank you very much. Yeah. Everyone that that, that wants to uh, to join me to, uh, and follow some some content, uh, they can follow me on LinkedIn or send me a DM on LinkedIn. I will be happy to, to answer every any question or insight um, directly with my name on LinkedIn. And I have my newsletter that it's uh, the startup effect.com. Um, so, so yeah, you can find me in those different channels. Thanks, Alan. Awesome. Thank you very much for having me.